So did you know that DaVinci Resolve has 12 built-in film print emulation LUTs that you can use? You actually probably did know that because that's probably why you're searching for this video on how to use them. But if you didn't know it, there's actually film print emulation LUTs built into DaVinci Resolve that come with the software for free. And they're very widely accepted and they're very high quality LUTs. Now, I should say there's actually six because there are six built for P3 color space and six built for Rec. 709. Now, applying a film print emulation in DaVinci Resolve is a little bit different than applying just a regular creative LUT to your footage. These LUTs are built for a specific input and you need to make sure that you are feeding it the proper input or else it's gonna look a little off. So make sure you watch to the end of the video to make sure that you know how to properly use it and how to make your footage look incredible with these film print emulation LUTs applied. So what you don't wanna do is simply create a new node and then apply the film look and see that it's too strong and then adjust the intensity to look good. You do not want to do this because you are not going to receive the full benefit that the film print emulation is going to give you. So I'm gonna show you the proper way to do it here. So I'm gonna reset this node grade. And then right here is just my color space conversion. This was shot on the Ari Amira in Ari Wide Gamut 3, Ari Log C3. So I'm just converting that to my timeline, color space and gamma, which you can see in my project settings, I'm set to DaVinci YRGB and Rec. 709A because I'm grading on a Mac on the actual computer monitor. And so this setting is great because what you see here is what you get when you export. So that is what the color space transform is converting my footage to. Now, if we go over to this node and we go to our film print emulation LUTs, you're gonna see that we have the DCI P3 LUTs here. That's basically the color space that we're working in. So we're not gonna use these, we're gonna use the Rec. 709 versions because that matches our timeline color space. You can actually see what the input color space is that they're expecting and what they're designed for. So to do that, I'm just gonna go reveal that in Finder. Here we have the LUT, and I'm going to open it with text edit. You can open any LUT with text edit and you can see what's actually going on underneath the hood. Now, this is really cool because it actually gives us the input gamma. So this is great because we can see clearly here that it is expecting an input of Cineon log. So back in Resolve, we were not feeding it a Cineon log curve before here. We were feeding it a Rec. 709. And even if we, if I create a new version here, reset, now we're in the log C3, even if I apply it here, it's not gonna look incredible because I haven't, one, converted the color space to Rec. 709 yet, and two, the Ari log C3 curve is different than the Sinyong film curve. It's still a log curve, but it has different properties. So I'm gonna go back to the previous version, and here we have our footage converted to Rec. 709, so I'm gonna leave that there. I'm actually gonna create a new node, so we're just gonna treat this as our normal base grade. I'll label this as CST, and then on this node is where we're going to feed our LUT the Cineon curve. So I'm gonna go back to my effects, go to color space transform, and then my input color space and the input gamma, use timeline, that's fine, because that's gonna be Rec. 709A. And then my output color space, we're gonna leave as is, because we're still in Rec. 709, but my gamma, I want to convert to Cineon film log. So now we've basically converted back to Cineon film log, the beauty of this color space transform is that it is non-destructive. So we're not destroying anything, any data here by doing these two adjustments. So now if we go to this LUT and apply our 2383 D55, you can see that it's properly applied and the colors look really nice, really accurate, much better than just applying the LUT to the log footage and definitely much better than applying it to Rec. 709 and then decreasing the intensity. So now we can actually go through and preview what all of these different LUTs are doing. So these are all Kodak 2383 and just different white points. And then let's go to Fujifilm 3513 DI, D55 white point, D60, D65. So you can kind of just click through these and preview which ones work on your footage the best. 
I actually prefer the Kodak 2383 D55 LUT. And so I'm going to use that. So say after applying all of this, you might still want to adjust the intensity of the film print emulation LUT. Now still what you don't want to do is just adjust the key output gain for the LUT because you can see we run into another issue here is that this LUT has both a conversion and a creative look built into it. So if we decrease the gain of this, we're losing the Cineon gamma to Rec. 709 2.4 gamma conversion. So I'm gonna reset this to one. And the proper way to do this is to highlight both of these nodes, right click, and then create a compound node. Now, this basically takes these two nodes, puts them into a compound node, and then I'm going to label it FPE. Now that we have these in a compound node, now I can actually go to my key and I can change the output and that easily allows us to adjust the intensity of this look. So if I turn this off, we are back to our Rec. 709. If I turn it on, now we have the film print built in. If I ever want to change this, you can just go show compound node and then we can change the LUT inside of here and then exit and we're all good to go. So if you want to adjust exposure and white balance, anything like that, you want to do that before the original color space transform. So I'm just going to make a new node here, go to my offset wheel and say we want to make it a bit brighter. I can just adjust the offset to make that brighter. I can also push this a little bit warmer if we want, or you can make it cooler, whatever looks good to you. Maybe we'll make it a little bit warmer and then I'll just bring the exposure down a tiny bit. So there's our basic adjustment. We've just warmed it up and increased the exposure a bit. I'll just call this primary. So now we're on our way to building an entire node tree. Um, you can add anything after the LUT, like different effects. Maybe you want to add halation or grain. And then before the CST, you're going to do your primary adjustments. If your footage was originally shot in a normal Rec. 709 profile, like natural or anything like that, just not log, you're not going to have the original color space transform here you're just going to have the film print emulation. So you're gonna make this Rec. 709, you know, to Cineon film log, that kind of thing. But you're not gonna to have to convert the log footage. But I would still recommend doing your primary adjustments before your film print emulation. This is probably gonna be near the end of your node tree, and you're just gonna do any like minor secondary adjustments after that. Like say, you know, really dialing in your black point or, you know, making small minor adjustments, vignettes, stuff like that afterwards. So the next cool thing is that I've got a couple other clips here. I can just apply this grade to the other clips. I've already got the film print emulation built in. And then all I have to do is go to my primary node and I can make whatever adjustments are necessary. And then we'll just apply it here and boom, we have our Kodak 2383 D55 LUT right on the footage and makes it really easy for us to achieve that nice film look. Right, so hopefully all of this made sense. Try to waste as little time as possible explaining this to you. Leave a comment if you have any other questions. Also, if you're really into getting film looks on your footage, I actually just released a Super 8 millimeter emulation preset for DaVinci Resolve. It's actually a power grade that you can apply to your footage to get the Super 8 look and I'm extremely proud of it. We've been working on it for six or seven months now. And so check the link below to check out the Super 8 millimeter preset. That's gonna do it for me for this one. I will see you guys in the next video.